Today we'll be continuing our discussion from last week of Loba Shemaimhi, accepting heavenly signs when it comes to halacha, listening to prophecy when it comes to halacha. So, quickly just to review what we did last week, is that the Rambam, based on the Gemara, tell us that if a Navi comes and tells us, or heavenly, any heavenly sign tells us that uh, halacha is, is, is this, this way, based on he heard from Hashem, or he has a bas call, or he heard a heavenly voice, we don't listen to him. We explain that the Ketzel says the reason why we don't listen to him is because uh, the ruts on Hashem was that Hashem wanted to give us the Torah and for us to be in charge. So therefore, if he says that he heard from Shemayim, otherwise, it can't be true because that's against the ruts on Hashem. And the Chassam Sofer added, the reason why Hashem did this was because Hashem wanted to, Hashem couldn't let the precedent be that uh, a prophet could come and, and affect Halacha because Chas Hashem, there'll be false, false prophets, as we know there were. And if Hashem Hashem lets the precedent, there can't be such a precedent, if there's such a precedent that um, that uh, heaven can affect halacha, it could lead to very, very bad things. And therefore, Hashem cut heaven out of Shema, out of halacha. But we'll see, there are certain uh, exceptions. Let's see the first exception. And that's Moshe Rabbeinu. The Gemara Numa Dafayin Heim at Aleph says that, there was a, that if there was ever a case, let's say he had a servant, and there's an argument between two Jews who's, who owns the servant. One person says, it's my servant, and you sold it to me. The other person says, no, you stole it from me, and it's my servant. So you have an argument. So the Gemara says that Moshe Rabbeinu sometimes would say, tomorrow morning, go to the servant, uh, the, the servant wherever he finds the mun. Right? Each person would get mun. They only get their own personal uh, gift of bread in the morning. So the servant wouldn't get it, it would be by his Rebbe. His Rebbe would get a double portion, one for him and one for his servant. So Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu would say, pretty much, Hashem is going to decide this halacha, that wherever the man happens, if the man happens to be by this guy, that means that he owns the servant, and if the double portion of man is by this guy, that means he owns the servant. So the kapas tamarim, and that Gemara asked the question, I thought we said that we don't allow heavenly signs to affect halacha, so how can Moshe Rabbeinu paskin, based on who Hashem will deliver the man to, that's against the halacha of Loba Shemaimi. And Chas Shalom, we said before that if a uh, if you know this is this this is a very very big prohibition. It potentially could lead in certain situations to death penalty, to Navi Sheker. So how could he do this? So the Torah Tamima and Bichukoisai, Sifkat and Reish Hazayin brings this question, and he answers very simply. His second answer is. He says this entire halacha that a Navi is not allowed to paskin based on prophecy, this whole discussion of Loba Shemaimi, that's only after Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, he's different. Moshe Rabbeinu was able to paskin based on heavenly signs, based on prophecy, based on Ruch HaKadosh based on Giloi of Elio, if Elio teaches Malacha, that's also fine. Eli, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is on a different level, and he's exempt from this loss. And therefore, the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu, to answer the question very simply, the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu was able to have the man uh, describe who, who, uh, who owns the servants is because it's Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu is, is on a different plate. The Chassam Seifer really uh, says the same thing. And the Chassam Seifer, based on what we said before, what's the, it works out perfectly. He says, Lashitaso. According to the Chassam Seifer, what's the reason why we can't allow for a Navi to paskin based on prophecy? Because it could lead to a distortion of halacha. You can't have such a precedent because, uh, you know, what's stopping a false prophet from getting up there? So says Chassam Seifer, but Moshe Rabbeinu obviously is not a problem. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who created the Masorah. It's Moshe Emes Vesoroso Emes. We're not concerned. It's not going to lead to anything. What are you going to say? Because Moshe Rabbeinu did it, it could lead to distortion. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who gave us the Torah. He was the Masorah of the Torah. He was the one who who was uh, who was received it from Hakadosh Baruch who gave it to us. There's no concern of distortion. If Moshe Rabbeinu does something, we're not worried that it might affect the Masorah incorrectly. If Moshe Rabbeinu was the Masorah, and the Rav Vadi Yosef Zatzal, he has a very lengthy discussion in Chelak Aleph Arachaim Simemem Aleph. He has a very lengthy discussion about Lobo Shemayim in general. And he writes over there in Sifkat and Ches that he says that the Zayar Kaddish in Parshas Yisroi already said that Moshe Rabbeinu paskin based on Ruach Kaddish. So Moshe Rabbeinu, it seems from many, many poskim, uh, is the one exception to the rule, at least for now, the first exception to the rule, that he's allowed to paskin based on um, prophetic visions. The second discussion is that I want to talk about today is, is a, a Navi allowed to ask Hashem to remind him about a halacha. Meaning a Navi is not allowed to ask Hashem to paskin, to say a new thing, a new thought. He's not allowed to do He's not allowed to introduce halachas. But what if we just forgot? You know, you had a Shailah, 
how do we paskin? Do we paskin, you know, like Beishama uh, or Beis Hillel? Originally, we always remember we paskin like Beis Hillel, and then and now we forget the halacha. We we forget. We, we don't know what the halacha is. So could you ask Hashem to just to remind us? Meaning he's not doing anything new. He's just reminding us of what we forgot. So it would seem that from the Gemara and Timur that we discussed last week, last time, it would be a problem. Because the Gemara and Timur says that when Moshe Rabbeinu uh, died, Klai Yisrael was so distraught, they forgot 3,000 halachas, and they asked Hashem, and Yeshua asked Hashem, please remind me the halachas, and Hashem said, no, I can't. Lo so it's clear from the Gemara and Timur that it is absolutely not allowed for a Navi to ask Hashem to have halachic rulings based on Shemaim, even if it's just to remind you something that you already knew. However, the problem is the Gemara in Megillah. The Gemara in Megillah, the Gemara in Megillah, and into Gemara and Aleph, the Gemara says, meaning that there are five letters that they're called end, end the letters. You know, there's a mem, and then there's an end of mem. There's a nun, and there's an end of nun. It's a nun, nun sofit, as they would say it in, uh, in, uh, in Hebrew. So, the Gemara says that those letters were introduced by prophets, by Nevi'im. The Nevi'im ones were the ones who created these letters. The Gemara asks, I thought a Navi can't create halacha. A Navi Rasha al Khadish A Navi can't create halacha, as we said last time. It's not up to them to decide based on prophecy. So the Gemara ends off, El Shikacham Khazraviyistam. They didn't create halachas, they just reminded us of the halachas that we had already forgotten. Meaning, these end these nun sofis, these end the letters, Kla Yisrael had known them already, and Kla Yisrael had forgotten them. So all the Nevi'im were doing was reminding us of what we had already forgotten, and that's allowed. So it's clear; it's a clear contradiction. The Gemara Megillah says that a Navi is allowed to remind us of halachas, seemingly based on prophecy, if we already forgot the halachas, he's just reminding us. But the Gemara in Timur says that when Yeshua forgot the halachas, Hashem said, I'm not going to remind you. So what's going on? So many Achronim, the Torah Tamima, and many other Achronim, Explain very simply. When the Gemara and Megillah says that the Navi and the prophets taught us a halacha, reminded us of halachas that we forgot, it wasn't based on prophecy. You're not allowed to use prophecy to tell you any halachas, even if it's just reminding you of something you've forgotten. When the Gemara and Megillah says that the that the Navi and the prophets told us the the concept of the end of letters, the nun sofit, they weren't using, they weren't telling us this information based on prophecy. They learned Torah. At the end of the day, a prophet is still a Tamil Chacham. And he sat down and they learned Gemara like any other person learned Gemara. And they, 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 they figured out the halachas. They used it. They, they used their deduction, however they did it. Like uh, Ramosha Feinstein sat down and he learned the sugya and he paskin based on that sugya. So the Nevi'im sat down and they paskin that there's a concept of uh, end letters. But uh, meaning, just to summarize, According to most Achronim, a Navi is not allowed to remind you of a halacha that was forgotten through prophetic use, but he's allowed to remind you based on his regular learning. At the end of the day, he's no different than any other Talmud Chacham. So therefore, when the Gemara says in Tzmura that Hashem said, I can't remind you of halacha, that was describing, that was describing, uh, Hashem was saying that I can't remind you of halachas, because, just because you forgot, I can't. I can't use prophetic visions to remind you of something. And when the Gemara in Timura, uh, the Gemara Megillah says that the prophets were the ones who uh, reminded Klal Yisrael about the end of letters. It doesn't mean that they didn't use through prophetic vision. It's like a little misleading that it calls them prophets. They happen to be prophets, but they didn't remind them through prophetic visions. They remi- they had this information not through prophecy. They got this information through learning Torah, like any other Talmud Chacham. The problem is that Rashi and Sukkah Daf Mem Dalad seems to indicate that the Nevi got this information through prophetic process, which is um, a problem. So the Chassam Seifer and the Maritz Chiyas and the Seifer, Teres and Avim, all ask what's going on with Rashi. How could Rashi say that the prophets got this information through prophetic vision? Because Rashi says, Rashi says, Api Hadibor. They remind that they got this information on Piyadibar. Al Piyadibar seems to be from the spoken word of God, which means prophecy. So all the Achronim explains the Chassam Sofer and the Maritzchi say, no, no, it doesn't mean they got it through prophetic vision. It means through um, Hashem gave them Siyat uh, Deshmaya, that through their learning they were able to get the inspiration, meaning that they sat down to learn, and, and through Siyat Deshmaya, through Hashem's help. That's it's sort of, it's not like through Hashem, meaning Hashem spoke to them, it's through Hashem's help they were able to learn and paskin correctly. So again, just to summarize, according to most Achronim and most Rishonim, 
you are not able to to paskin based on prophetic process, even if it's just a reminding of halacha that you forgot. When the Gemara says that shachacham b'chazer v'yisam, the Gemara Megillah says that they were reminded, it means they were reminded through regular learning process, but it doesn't mean that they were reminded through prophetic vision. All questions can be sent to avizakadinsky at gmail.com, A-V-I-Z-A-K-U-T-I-N-S-K-Y at